Hello, welcome to part two of this YouTube video. In this one, we're gonna cover the Tesla Powerwall part of this system, which offers a whole home backup system with 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. Firstly, we'll have a little recap of what we showed you in part one. If you haven't watched yet, that is out on our YouTube channel. Why don't you go and check that out and then join us back here for part two. Anyway, let's have a little recap of what we installed and what we went through last time. Okay, so on this job, just a recap from part one, we've installed 24 375 watt sun power panels and they're up above me here with the solar skirt all on there and we've got 12 on the front, 12 on the back. The back is north facing, which we covered in the last video. So go back and have a look at that if you wanna see those. We've also got a Tesla Powerwall, 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable capacity with a five kilowatt charge rate and discharge rate. And that also provides a whole home backup system for this site. We're gonna go through the cabling, how we've installed it, what it looks like, and uh, yeah, have a look at the app and everything about the Tesla Powerwall. So let's get into that. We've got a couple of elements here that I want to show you. So we've got the earth pit here, which Ollie has uh, lovingly put into this pavement here. Uh, and we've got a nice low reading of 58 ohms on that, which is really good, or 56 ohms, I think it was. That then comes through and is a 10 mil cable, which if we walk here, we're still on with putting all this in at the minute. So you can see we've got the earth cable just along the floor here. Uh, we've then got our Doncaster Cables Tesla cable here. So Doncaster Cables have, have created this cable uh, which allows the power, the communication and everything to be in one cable, which makes Tesla installs really easy and also means it's a lot neater. We've then got our supply. So this supply comes in from the uh, main isolator just in here, comes in around the back and into our fuse block here through the gateway that then allows the gateway to switch the whole home onto the battery when there's a power cut or if the grid is unstable high voltage things like that and then that will power the db in the house but also our solar and our battery obviously because that's where the power's coming from so that's all hidden away in here and that'll all get wired over the course of today we like to try and get all this stuff inside when we can but sometimes there just isn't the space so we've we've put this right next to the meter boxes because on the front it looks nice and sleek and doesn't look out of place next to meter boxes like with tesla it's a nice high-end finish on it this part is really at the brain of the system so this will monitor the solar production uh, the import export and this connects to the internet this this box the the actual power wall the block of energy is, is just that really a block of energy and an inverter and that inverter inside the power wall, which we'll have a look at that in a little while charges and discharges that power wall and you know this part is the actual brain of the system so all he's on we're doing that now so we'll let him come back and carry on working his magic in here we've got our solar cable here to get in and we've got a solar edge mod bus to also fit here to allow us to do some export limitation as well so yeah we'll let Ollie back in and let him crack on okay so we've got the power wall all up and running now you might be able to hear the the hum of the inverter uh, and the fan going in this one because it is kicking some real power into the batteries. I mean, I think last time I checked it, it was storing around four kilowatts. So there's four kilowatts being put into the battery cells, which is good. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to store all this power for, for the property later on tonight. So this is all up and running. This is one unit. So if we want to add another unit, if the customer wants to add another unit in the future, we can stack the system so we can come this way or we can have another one on the wall somewhere. It's quite versatile in, in what we can do. So you can see on this side here, we've got our AC isolator. We've got our Tesla cable just here, which runs down and that has all of those communications cables in that you saw earlier. So that makes that really nice and neat. Otherwise, we've had to add multiple cables coming down into that power wall, which would just have been a bit of a, a bit of a nightmare. So that is uh, the system up and running and working. We're gonna have a little look at the Tesla app in a minute just to uh, show you what that looks like from the customer's side of, side of it. But for me as a, as a metrician and as an engineer, this is, the, this is the side I love to see. 
um, all nice and neat on this board and uh, yeah now protecting this home from those high energy bills the other thing obviously with this is we get the whole home back up so if the power goes off we've set a minimum level of uh, 20 percent into this battery so we've reduced the usable capacity by 20 percent the customer can change this as well uh, if they want but uh, yeah we've reduced that to 20 percent so that it'll always keep you know that level there if we uh, if we imagine it as a tank that level there so that if there's a power cut it can draw on that power to keep the lights on for a little bit longer and you might decide that in the summer months there's less power cuts so drop that down to 10 5 or 10 percent something like that so that you can keep the lights on a little bit longer and also the solar comes back on with these systems as well so you have longer solar uh, bigger solar generation during the summer times so there's more chance that you can store more power because you've got to remember the minimum capacity is just a minimum so you might have a power cut with a fully charged battery and then you'll have a fully charged battery to draw on so this is only a minimum but i know uh, some of our customers decide that summertime they drop it to 10 percent winter time they might take it up to 40 50 percent it's completely up to them it depends how many power cuts you have but it's up and running now and uh, yeah i'm looking forward to seeing how this works for our customer we've got this app all set up for our customer so you can see on this one we've got solar that is generating three kilowatts the home is using 100 watts there's nothing going back to the grid and then we've got a charge of 2.9 kilowatts going into the battery so and the battery is 25 percent charged so if we go into this here we've only just turned this on but you can see we've got it's actually showing no figures because it's been it's not been on enough so if we do a little follow-up video to this then we'll be able to show you a little bit more on this but you can see it's starting to read what the solar's producing what the power wall is doing what the grid is doing but these figures are very very new and you can download this data you can change the timestamp on that as well to go through different months so that is this one here so you can also access this from the energy part the impact so how it's all going all of the solar power that we've generated since this system was turned on but that's to be expected when it's only been uh, on for, for so long so on time-based control storm watch is on standby utility rate has all been set up um, so that's more for the customer to set up other users and put all the tariff details in and you can also access support onto the app there's not a huge amount to view on this, uh, to be honest. More about a, a direct view of what is happening. We can also tell the system to go off grid. So we can put the system into off grid mode on here, which uh, just by the press of a, of a button here, we can, oh, we need to pair the power wall to the, to the phone to start with, but we can go off grid here, or we can just pull them in, turn the main switch off and see what happens, which we'll, uh, we'll do. Yeah, so that's everything that we can see on here, all up and running, 2.7 kilowatts of solar now, generating nicely, home's using 200 watts, so a nice chunk of power going into that battery, which is good to see. Okay, so there is another YouTube video wrapped up. We've got part one and part two, which is this one. So if you've missed one of the parts, then head over and watch that to get the full walkthrough of this fantastic project up here in Cramlington. Really like this project, I really like these panels. Even though they're expensive, they're really, really good quality. It's always nice to do a Tesla Powerwall project. The Teslas are notoriously hard to get hold of. So when we manage to get hold of some and we manage to get some installed, it's fantastic. And it just goes to show the quality of their system. The app is great. The back whole home backup is really simple and good. Uh, they're just a joy to install, really. Along with obviously Solar Edge, which you all know we love Solar Edge for all of its benefits and everything else like that. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching the video. We'll see you on the next one, and please like, subscribe, and all that jazz. Thanks very much.